Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Ksenia. I make videos for people who are going through the family immigration process. Today, we're going to fill out the form I-90, which is the application to replace or renew your permanent resident card. This form, although very short, can be quite complicated as it is used for many different situations. In my personal preference, you should fill out this form online and I will be releasing my online step-by-step -step guide for this form simultaneously with this video, which I will also link in the description box. However, if you choose to fill out this form by paper, that is perfectly fine, but I do encourage you to carefully read the form instructions for this form. So let's get started. The current expiration date for this form is 2-28-2027. Aside from checking the expiration date on the form, however, you should also scroll to the bottom of the page and make sure that the edition date also matches whatever is on the USCIS site. First, provide your alien registration number, which you can find on your current green card. If your alien registration number has less than nine digits in it, you can use zeros at the beginning of your A number to make sure that the A number adds up to nine digits. And then add your online USCIS account number if you have one. According to the form instructions, you will only get a USCIS online account number if you previously filed a form online with the receipt starting with IOE. Moving on, provide your current legal name. So here in questions 3A, 3B, and 3C, you will write the name you want to be written on your newly issued green card. Moving on, answer the question if your name has legally changed since you got your original green card. So only answer this question if legally changed your name. Do not select this option if USCIS made a mistake in your name, for example. So if you are using the form I-90 to update them of your legal name change, then you will click yes and provide your name exactly as it appears on your current green card below. You will also select this option if you accidentally made a mistake in your applications and now your green card has incorrect data on it and provide the name exactly as it is spelled on your current green card. If you're not applying to update your name change and your name stays the, stayed the same and you're applying for a renewal of a green card for whatever other reason, you will select no. And if you are using the form I-90 to correct a mistake that USCIS made in your name, you will also click no. If you're using the form I-90 because you never received your card, you will click not applicable. Moving on, provide your current mailing address, provide where you would like your new card to be sent. You can totally skip the line that says in care of name. You only need to provide a name here. If somebody else resides at this mailing address or receives mail on your behalf, if you are the person who receives mail at this mailing address, you can leave this line blank. Move it on. Provide your physical address, but only if it is different from the mailing address. So if you reside at the same address where you also receive mail, you can leave this whole section blank. Moving on, provide your biographic information. So your gender, date of birth, where you were born, and the first names of your mom and your dad. Please know that it is only asking for their first names. Moving on to question 14, class of admission. This sometimes causes confusion for people because here you want to provide the class of admission that is currently listed on your green card, even if USCIS made a mistake on your green card and assigned you the wrong class of admission. For example, if you are supposed to be a conditional resident with the class of admission CR1, but USCIS mistakenly issued you a 10-year green card under IR1 category, that is the category that you will write here. Here, write exactly what is on your current green card. Classes of admission 
do tend to change, especially if you are renewing one of the older permanent resident cards. In that case, you will write here exactly the class of admission that appears on your permanent resident card. And there is a chance that when you receive your new updated green card, your class of admission may look different, but it can still mean the same thing. And I will link below a resource that talks about the current classes of admission and their meanings. In addition, this class of admission is what is written on your green card. So do not write here the class of admission on which you originally arrived in the US, for example. If you came here on a B1, B2 visa or a student visa, that is not what you will write here. Here you will write the class of admission as it exactly appears on your permanent resident card. And that is exactly what it says in the form instructions. Moving on, date of admission is the issue date on your permanent resident card. And then obviously provide your social security number if you have one. So part two, here we will need to select our application type. If you scroll through all of these options, you will notice that there are many different application types. You can only select one box. First, you will need to select what your current status is, whether you are a lawful permanent resident with a 10 year green card, a permanent resident and commuter status, or a conditional permanent resident with a two year green card. We're not going to cover the commuter status permanent residence because it is not a very popular option and I don't really understand it that well. We will talk about regular lawful permanent residents and conditional permanent residents today. So here you will need to indicate what your actual status is, even if USCIS wrongly assign your status. So for example, if you are, like we mentioned earlier, a conditional permanent resident, but your status was mistakenly assigned as IR1, then here you will select I am a conditional permanent resident and it will automatically jump us to the section for conditional permanent residents only. If you select that you are a lawful permanent resident, it will automatically jump us to the section where you will need to select a reason for filing. So let's say we are a conditional permanent resident to correct a mistake on our green card, but I will go through and explain all of these options first. And I made a note here, you can take a screenshot from the form instructions, whatever reason you select here, whether or not you have to pay the filing fee for this form, which is why this form can be so tricky, because some of these reasons require you to file a fee and other reasons require that you don't have to file a fee. So let's talk about it. If your previous card was lost, stolen, or destroyed, you will have to pay a filing fee to receive it. If your card was issued but never received by mail, you do not have to pay a filing fee with one exception. In the form instructions, you will notice that if your card was never delivered to you, despite you giving them a correct mailing address, you should be able to replace your card for free by filing this form, but only in a situation where USCIS received your card back in the mail as undeliverable. Unfortunately, if USCIS never got your card back, you will have to choose the reason number 2A in that case, that your card was lost. To make sure that your card was returned back to USCIS, you can check the case status online based on your receipt number or in your USCIS online account or using the tracking number from uh, United States Postal Service, for example. If your existing card was mutilated, which means that it exists, but it's not in a good condition, you will have to file under option C and include the fee. If your existing card has incorrect data because of the USCIS or DHS mistake, then you don't have to pay the filing fee. 
for this form because it was not your mistake. And please make sure that as you're reading the form instructions for each of these options, you also carefully read what supporting documents you will need to send with your form. Aside from the actual payment and the form itself, you will also be asked to attach specific proof. So if, for example, you are a permanent resident who's supposed to get a 10-year green card, but you got a temporary two-year green card, you will select the option 2D and ask them to correct this error for you without having to pay the filing fee. If you were the one that made a mistake in your card, you will have to select the option 2E, my name or other biographic information has been changed. And for this option, you do have to pay the fee because it was your mistake. If you are simply applying for your green card renewal, for example, you had your green card for nine years and six months, you can begin applying for a green card renewal under the option 2F. But USCIS on their website does encourage you that if your card is expiring soon, and it is a 10-year green card, they encourage you to explore your naturalization options instead so that you can become a U.S. citizen. If you decide to apply for citizenship instead, in that case, you do not have to submit the green card renewal form as your citizenship application receipt notice will give you an automatic extension of your current green card. These two options refer to permanent residents who received their green card before they were age 14. After you turn 14, you have to register with USCIS and get a new green card. And more likely, you will also be asked to attend biometrics in this case because usually children under 14 do not attend biometrics. You will have to select one of these options depending when your existing green card will actually expire. If your existing green card has an expiration date that is after your 16th birthday, then you do not have to pay the application fee. But if your green card will expire before your 16th birthday, you have to pay the filing fee. And you can check what the filing fees are on their website. They do give you an important note that once you turn 14, you must register with USCIS and apply for a new green card within 30 days. If you do that after 30 days, you must select the option 2J, which basically means that you are applying to replace a permanent resident card for unspecified reason. And if your card is expired, you must apply under reason 2F. Either way, for these two, you will have to pay the filing fee. So please make sure that you apply within 30 days of turning 14. And this is why I encourage you guys to use the online form because it might be faster to do that than having to wait in the mail for them to accept your application. These couple of options have to do with being a commuter and either switching to commuter status or from commuter status to permanent residency. I do not understand these, so I will not be covering them. And the reason to J is if you're applying to replace the older version of an alien registration card to a permanent green card, or if there is another reason for applying, like mentioned above. And the final part, section B, like we mentioned earlier, has to do with conditional permanent residence. And a lot of these options are very similar to the ones listed in the section A. So you either are applying because your card was stolen or destroyed, you never received your card, your card was mutilated, there is a mistake on your card made by DHS, or your name or other data was legally changed and also here i made a note when you have and don't have to pay the fee depending on which reason you choose so in our case let's say for example like we said we were given a class of admission ir1 when we were actually supposed to receive cr1 so 
we selected that we are a conditional permanent resident and we're going to select this reason. My existing card has incorrect data because of DHS error. And they do ask to attach the actual card, not a copy, but the actual card in your application here. But if you would like to hang on to the physical card for a little bit longer, even if it has wrong data, it is still an important identification document. You, in that case, should then apply for this form online instead, and you will be asked to provide a copy of your permanent resident card instead. Eventually, they may send you a request for evidence for your physical green card, or you can send it with the paper application right away. Of course, it is a risk that you might have to take with that being without your green card for some time. And that's why you will need to make sure that you obtain a stamp in your passport. You will have to set an appointment for that to make sure that you still hold the proof of your permanent resident status in a form of a passport stamp. So moving on, here you will be asked to provide additional information. So first, they're asking where you applied for an immigrant visa or adjustment of status. So as you know, there's two ways to obtain a green card, either through consular, this is what immigrant visa refers to, or adjustment of status, which is for applicants who were inside the U.S., so here, provide the name or the location of the embassy, consulate, or field office where you applied for your green card. And the second question asks you to provide the name of the embassy, consulate, or field office where your green card was actually issued. In a lot of cases, these two will be the same. Moving on, only complete the following questions 3A through 3A1 if you did consular process. So if you did adjustment of status by filing the form I-485, you can skip these questions and move on to question four. But just to explain these two questions, if you applied through consular processing, first question asks you the destination in the U.S. at the time of admission. So this means where was the final place where you intended to go? But then it asks about your port of entry. And this is a place where you had initially your passport and visa checked. And again, this is only for consular applicants. And finally, moving on to question four, it's asking if you have ever been in any of these immigration proceedings. So asylum court is also included here, which you will have to answer yes or no to. And then it also asks if you have ever abandoned your lawful permanent resident status willingly or you abandoned your status by residing overseas too long and losing your status this way answer yes or no and if you answer yes to any of these questions you will need to provide detailed explanation on the additional information page and provide evidence for both of these in a form of a supporting document copies moving on Continue to provide your biographic information, ethnicity, race, height, weight, eye, and hair color. Finally, answer the question about any accommodations that you may need. In the last couple of parts, provide your applicant statement, whether you completed this form yourself, whether somebody interpreted it for you, or if somebody prepared the form for you. Provide your phone number, your email, and your signature here. If you're filing this form by mail, the signature must be made in black ink pen. They do not accept electronic or digital signatures. The final two parts refer to any interpreters or preparers who interpreted or prepared this form for you. So if you selected box 1B or 2 over here, you will need to provide these people's information here. If not, you can simply leave it blank. And the final page is the additional information page. Even if you have nothing to explain and you leave this page blank, you should still provide your name and your alien number on this page and it must be included with the rest of your application. So even if you have nothing written on here, you must still include it with your packet, with your form. Otherwise, it will get rejected. 
that is basically the whole form. I hope that I was able to explain to you all the questions. Please make sure that you read the form instructions carefully because each of these reasons will also tell you what kind of evidence you need to provide. Check out the online I-90 guide. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and I hope to see you guys in my next videos. Bye!